Well, well, look, better late than never, but here we go. It's that time of the week. It's time now for the latest news on what's hot and what's not in the world of technology with Matthew Dickerson on Tech Talk. Here on TCFM 88.9. G'day, mate. How are you? I hope that song didn't refer to me, Richard. You normally play a song that refers to something we're going to do, and I'm in an awful way. I hope not. <laughs> no, I don't think you are. <laughs> um, thanks for sort of uh, stepping back a little bit, but we had to get the uh, pollies on this morning early because they've, they've got a busy day. And I understand you had a bit of a chat outside with them anyway. So yeah, good to catch up with them. Good, good to catch up with uh, a couple of people we, we know well. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, let's look at Tech Talk today. Um, do you find your Wi-Fi range is limited and would you like Wi-Fi to be what over a kilometre, you were telling me? A kilometre, yes. Now, this is really important. You say kilometre, do you? I say kilometre. What do you say? Kilometre, yeah. Right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> tomato, tomato. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> the, the big problem here, Richard, is I had one of my teenage children a few years ago who had a major, major drama. She found that in our house, in the toilet, the Wi-Fi didn't quite give her enough speed. So first world problems. So anyway, Dad, to fix the problem, with me I've got four wireless access points around the house to make sure every millimetre of the house is covered with Wi-Fi. What about the garage, is it right? It's covered outside. The shed? Covered everywhere. The shed? Yeah, <laughs> so you're, you're right. Now you can go to the toilet, you can go to the water the garden, whatever. The, the swing that they used when they were six? That's exactly, it's everywhere, it's yeah, everywhere. Right. But this new Wi-Fi protocol has been announced by the Wi-Fi Alliance. And normally the range you get might be 10, 20, 15, 100 metres, depending on the construction around your house. But this one will give you a range of about a kilometre. Now, don't get too excited. There's good news and there's bad news. You can't have your cake and eat it too. At the moment, there's two standard protocols that are used. One's the five gigahertz range, one's 2.4 gigahertz. The general story is the higher frequency, better speed, less range. Slightly lower frequency, not quite as good as speed, better range. And that's what happens with frequencies as you get the frequencies in, in everything we talk about, mobile phones, Wi-Fi, all the rest of it. AM, FM transmission. Exactly the same concept. Mm -hmm. That's right. The frequencies change at the higher frequency, better quality. This new Wi-Fi protocol that's been announced is below one gigahertz in its frequency, so the range is better, but the actual speed of it is not <laughs> as good. So it's not going to be used for someone sitting a kilometre from their house streaming a movie, that type of speed. We're talking about lots of devices, and this is what it's all about. It's about low power, long range mm -hmm. devices. So for example, in your house you might have locks on doors, you might have sensors on gates, you might have some security cameras that aren't streaming all the time but might alert you of things. All these little devices that are part of the Internet of Things, these will be connected with this sort of extended Wi-Fi. At the moment, right now, we've got about 13.8 billion Internet of Things devices across the world, about two for every person in the world. By 2025, they say there'll be 30 billion of these devices connected. So that's where you need this extended Wi-Fi and that low power Wi-Fi. So if they're running on batteries, they'll last for longer. So it's exciting news from a technology perspective, but in terms of being able to stream movies at a friend's place a few blocks away, you're probably not so good. Yeah, not so good. Um, Pornhub. What's Pornhub <laughs> all about? <laughs> this is a family show. It's a family show. So I'm not encouraging people to go and go on Pornhub unless You've got your HSC, you've got your mathematics exams coming up, you might want a few lessons, and you start to go, what's going on here? There was a maths teacher who had this idea of getting into an online tutoring service. He thought this would be fantastic, invested a lot of money in it, and it didn't go so well. He was $49,000 in the hole for this whole process, and he was a bit distraught what we were going to do, teacher salary not great to be able to pay that money back. He came up with the idea of going where the students were, and that was Pornhub. <laughs> so he started doing math lessons, fully clothed, <laughs> on Pornhub and it went through the roof. He had 7,000 subscribers in no time at all, 2 million views in a very short period of time. He's paid back his $49,000 and he's now making good money by doing math lessons on Pornhub. Not what you think of. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you go where the market is, don't you? It's a, a bit of the case is that Muhammad won't come to the mountain, mountain goes to Muhammad, so go where the students were. I like the idea, I like the concept, but maybe people were disappointed. Maybe they thought they'd see some maths equation by someone without many clothes on. Oh, he's got a standard hoodie on. He said, I've worn the same hoodie in every particular segment I've ever done. <laughs> and I just sit there and I just do math lessons on a blackboard, but he gets lots of people watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just found that absolutely amazing. But as you say, you, you go you, you go where the market Maybe is. Maybe we should take Tech Talk to Pornhub, Richard. I'm not sure. Uh, well, you can. I'll stay here, thank you very much. And remain fully clothed in, in, in the corporate, corporate sweatshirt. Uh, 
Um, how about um, co controlling a computer with your eyes? This is a good one for dis disabled people. Yeah, people that have got a motor neuron disease, for example, even people that have got Parkinson's and the later stages of Parkinson's, it's very hard to control something like an icon on a phone screen or an iPad. So the latest iOS from Apple has got the ability to do this sort of thing with eye control, but it needs an accessory, and they've been working with various manufacturers around the world, and one manufacturer has now got their product ready to launch. It's out there in the marketplace. You attach it over the actual camera on the iPad, and you use your voice to do things. For example, yeah. I want to send an email. You actually talk the email, and it puts it there. But to open up the email app is quite difficult to do with your voice. So as you move your eyes around, this device over the camera tracks your eye movement. When you get to the icon that you want, you blink, and that actually opens it up. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. But you can imagine for someone that might have lost control of their hands or their arms, they might have had an accident, they might be in a wheelchair, a whole range of reasons that people can't use their hands like most people can, then this sort of thing is something that we don't necessarily think of, but there are people out there, thankfully, can solutions for people that have this sort of issue. Terrific. I like a red wine every now and again, as you know, and um, but I don't know whether I want to be served by a robot. Mm, maybe, maybe the not. robot bartender. I mean, you can't pour out your heart to a, a robot bartender, can you? And this is the issue. After, after you've had twenty-five red wines, <laughs> that's, that's right. and you're crying. Bartenders do so much more than serve you drinks that's, in the world we know as it stands at the moment. But they're finding some issues across the world. For example, sports stadiums, and this is in the US. They're using these robot bartenders already. Sports stadiums. During the game, everyone's sitting around in their seats and the bartender's sitting around twiddling their thumbs. Half time comes, or a break of the innings, for example, in baseball, then there's suddenly this huge line at the bars while people are trying to serve and the bartenders are going flat out. Robot bartenders can serve drinks much faster than a human bartender. They don't have sick days, they just keep operating regardless 24 hours a day if they need to. And yes, you don't have the ability to pour your heart out, which might be a bad thing because that reduces this huge queue that might be there while people are waiting to pour their heart out to the bartender. Maybe they can employ a psychologist in the bar. If you want to pour your heart out, go and see this particular bartender. If you just want to drink, go and see the robot yeah. bartender. They're even doing vending machines now, Richard. So you can have a cocktail vending machine in your pub or your club, and you walk up to it, you speak to it, you say, I'd like a bottle for sunrise, thank you. And then it's got all the drinks inside it. It mixes it up within seconds there's the vodka sunrise sitting there and a drink and you pay for that and away you go yeah, right. yeah. Okay. so i can't see replacing bartenders completely in a busy pub i can see absolutely and i found myself in nightclubs late at night you're shouting to the bartender and you hope they vaguely heard something about what you yeah. might have wanted being able to go up and just order or even better still you'd have an app on your phone you'd say i'll put the order in your paper on your phone you walk over and pick it up off the bar yeah, or get it out of the machine um, yeah, get your harvey yeah. wall banger out of the machine that's yeah. right uh, uh unsolicited question now it was in the the, uh, papers this morning that the Labor Party, I'm even political here, but I want an answer from you. They are claiming at the next federal election that they are going to spend $2.4 billion on improving MBN with, I presume, more cable and copying. Do we need that or are there other ways of improving the MBN by not spending all that amount of money? So I haven't actually seen that particular no, matter, no, I'm, I'm but, but there is certainly a desperate need for an improvement in our copper part of our MBN. The fibre part, anyone that's got fibre at the premises, and four sevenths of Dubbo has that, fantastic, that works well, you can do gigabit speeds. And there's a recent survey out of the UK that said if you've got higher speeds, gigabit connections, or fibre at the premises, just on price alone, your house is worth 5,000 pounds more than someone that doesn't have fibre to the home. So there is a value there, and people are associating the value with that. So if they're spending money on replacing copper and upgrading it to fibre, I think that's something that's needed, and in fact, that was the Labour Party initial idea before the coalition yeah. downgraded. Yeah, downgraded Tony, and Tony yeah. Abbott downgraded. Look, um, yeah. I only asked that question because are there other ways of doing it that not having to have copper, having fibre to the house? Are there, are there going to be other ways, other technologies in the future where we don't need cabling? Well, there's certainly wireless. Fixed wireless is working, but fixed wireless gets congested. And anyone that's experienced fixed wireless when it's first turned on, they think this is fantastic. I love fixed wireless. It's brilliant. And then as more and more people connect, the amount of bandwidth availability becomes a bit congested. Yeah. So fibre is still a great way to get lots of speed, lots of data to a business or to a household. If you've got a very sparse population, then a wireless situation could be good. But in anywhere that's densely populated, wireless becomes just too congested. All right. Mm. Now, thanks very much. My pleasure. Okay, we'll catch up with you again next week. Excellent. With more Tech Talk. And um, I'm going to worry about a bartender, the robot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure about that one. You always leave me thinking. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> it's 9 to 10. This is DCFM 88.9.